This is Gina from RN2 Professors with a video for you from my pediatric series on neuromuscular disorders. The review questions in this video will focus on cerebral palsy. The following review questions are on neuromuscular disorders in pediatrics with a focus on cerebral palsy. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers. Here's our first question. The parent of an infant asks the nurse what to watch for to determine whether the infant has CP. Which is the nurse's best response? Number one. If the infant cannot sit up without support before eight months. Number two, if the infant demonstrates tongue thrust before four months. Number three, if the infant has poor head control after two months. Number four, if the infant has clenched fists after three months. This question is asking you to pick the true statement about early signs of cerebral palsy. You need to know normal development milestones to answer this question. Number one, if the infant cannot sit up without support before eight months. Children with CP usually have developmental delays, but the milestone for sitting is six months. Eight months would be on the outer limits of normal development. Number two, if the infant demonstrates tongue thrust before four months. This is normal for up to six months. After that, it would be a concern. Number three, if the infant has poor head control after two months. It usually takes three months for an infant to gain good head control. Number four, if the infant has clenched fists after three months. Clenched fists after three months of age could be a sign of CP. So this is our correct answer. Number four is our correct answer. It is the only example of an abnormal milestone. The nurse is developing a plan of care for a child recently diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Which should be the nurse's priority goal? Number one, ensure the ingestion of sufficient calories for growth. Number two, decrease intracranial pressure. Number three, Teach appropriate parenting strategies for a special needs child. Number four, ensure that the child reaches full potential. This is an application question. The question is asking what the priority goal for a new diagnosed child is. Number one, ensure the ingestion of sufficient calories for growth. Well, this is an appropriate goal. It's not the priority currently. Number two, Decrease intracranial pressure. Increased intracranial pressure is not a clinical manifestation in cerebral palsy. Number three, teach appropriate parenting strategies for a special needs child. Parents of special needs children should be taught appropriate parenting strategies so the child can maximize their personal skill and minimize their limitations. This looks like it's our answer, but let's check the final option to be sure. Number four, ensure that the child reaches full potential. The priority for all children is to develop in their full potential. A child with CP needs a healthcare team and family to help them grow and develop their full potential. Number three is the correct answer. It is the priority goal for a newly diagnosed child. Here's our next question. Which would the nurse expect a child with spastic CP to demonstrate? Select all that apply. Number one, increase deep tendon reflexes. Number two, decreased muscle tone. Number three, scoliosis. Number four, contractures. Number five, scissoring. Number six, good control of posture. Number seven, good fine motor skills. This question is an analysis question. The question is asking you to determine which of the following options are clinical manifestations of spastic CP. This is also a select all that applies question, 
So make sure that you look at each answer individually to determine if it fits the question. Number one, increase deep tendon reflexes. This answer is correct. Children with spastic CP have increased deep tendon reflexes. Number two, decreased muscle tone. This answer is incorrect. Children with spastic CP have increased muscle tone, not decreased. Number three, scoliosis. This answer is correct. Children with spastic CP have scoliosis. Number four, contractures. This answer is correct. Children with spastic CP have quadriplegia. They can also develop contractures in the Achilles tendons, knees, and abductor muscles. Number five, scissoring. This answer is correct. Children with spastic CP have scissoring when they walk. A scissoring gait is when the patient walks with the knees and thighs pressed together or crossing each other. Number six, good control of posture. This answer is incorrect. Children with CP may have poor control of posture depending on the amount of their body that is involved. Standing straight takes a lot of muscle control. Number seven, good fine motor skills. This answer is incorrect. There are varying degrees of severity of CP and fine motor skill depends on the amount of brain injury the patient has. Numbers one, three, four, and five are the correct answers. They are all clinical manifestations seen in spastic CP. Next question. A three-year-old child with CP is admitted for dehydration following an episode of diarrhea. The nurse's assessment follows. Awake, pale, thin child laying in bed. Multiple contractures, drooling, coughing spells noted when parent feeds. Temperature 97.8 Fahrenheit, pulse 75, respirations 25, weight 7.2 kilograms. No diarrhea stool for 48 hours. Which nursing diagnosis is most important? Number one, potential for skin breakdown, lying in one position. Number two, alteration in nutrition, less than body requirements. Number three, potential for impaired social support, parent sole caretaker. Number four, alteration in elimination, diarrhea. This is an analysis question. The question is asking what the priority diagnosis is for this child based on the nurse's assessment. Data in the question stem that you need to focus on is the child was admitted for diarrhea but has not had an episode in 48 hours. The child coughs during feedings and the child's weight. Number one, potential for skin breakdown, lying in one position. The child is at risk for skin breakdown, but this is not the priority diagnosis currently. Number two, alteration in nutrition, less than body requirements. This child is severely underweight and malnourished. The parents need help managing the coughing episodes while feeding because they put the child at risk for aspiration and pneumonia. The weight of the child is about 16 pounds, which is normal for a four month old. This looks like our answer, but let's review the other options to make sure. Number three, potential for impaired social support, parent sole caretaker. The parents do need support in caring for this child, but this is not the priority diagnosis currently. Number four, alteration and elimination, diarrhea. The child has not had diarrhea for 48 hours. So this is not the appropriate diagnosis currently. Number two is our answer. This is the appropriate diagnosis for a severely underweight child. Here's our last question. The parent of a toddler newly diagnosed with CP asks the nurse what caused it. The nurse should answer which of the following. Number one. Most cases are caused by unknown prenatal factors. Number two, it is commonly caused by perinatal factors. 
Number three, the exact cause is not known. Number four, the exact cause is known in every instance. This is an application question. It is asking you to choose the best answer to give to the family regarding the cause of CP. Number one, most cases are caused by unknown prenatal factors. CP is a static injury that happens either before birth, during, or after. Depending on the presenting symptoms and the results of the diagnostic testing, the cause can be fairly accurately determined. Number two, it is commonly caused by perinatal factors. The majority of infants with CP had an insult in utero. Some of the causes of perinatal insult include hypoxia, trauma, infections, or genetic abnormalities. This looks like it's our answer, but we will review the other options to make sure. Number three. The exact cause is not known. With diagnostic tests and MRIs, the etiology of the brain insult can be determined. Number four, the exact cause is known in every instance. Patient history, physical assessments, and diagnostic tests can frequently determine the exact cause. Number two is our answer. It is the option that correctly explains the causes for CP. If you like this video, please subscribe for free and click the bell to get notified when weekly videos are released. Thank you for joining me.